from PRX. Friends beyond the binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, uh, whatever, you know, whatever alignment you, whether you're uh, in alignment uh, or, you know, if you have been out of alignment my whole life, I was thinking of alignment in uh, role-playing games. But you say, well, I'm going to put, yeah, I'm role-playing a person that doesn't understand when they talk about alignment, when they talk about my vehicle, even though I kind of understand it. And I say, well, it's that's fine. I'm used to my steering wheel being, you know, like, uh, I know the car will go straight if my steering wheel is at a, uh, you know, it's at a 30, you know, whatever, 2, two, two p.m. Uh and then I say, what if, like, they say, I'm out of alignment, you're out of alignment. This whole, uh, this whole role plays out of alignment. Uh, anyway, I mean, it makes me think of stars too, but I say, yeah, my star, they, that's what that's, they say when I go to um, talk to somebody and they say, you're out of alignment. And I say, I know, uh, I guess, uh, that confirms it. Thanks. Uh, do you charge, uh. And they say, no, it's a flat fee. And I say, okay, well, then I might as well stick around. Why don't you uh, tell me some other stuff? Uh, and uh, I don't know. Anyway, oh, if you're confused, and why is there all these uh, empty pauses? Those pauses were actually empty pauses. Uh, they weren't even pregnant pauses. But you say, what are all these empty pauses doing here? And uh, this confusing banter. Well, welcome to Sleep with Me, a podcast that's here to keep you company and take your mind off of stuff while you fall asleep. Uh, I'm so happy to be here to help uh, and to keep you company so you could get a good night's sleep because you deserve a good night's sleep. And I've been there, and a lot of other people listening have been there too. Now, this show is very different. It does take a couple times of listening to, uh, listening to it to get used to because then you realize, oh, I only ca- it takes just takes a while to realize, oh, you're I'm not I'm only kind of barely supposed to listen. I'm not supposed to do anything, but I could just barely listen to you, but I don't need to. So I'm really glad you're here. What we got coming up is support. That's how the show comes out. Free choice week, then a long meandering intro that's meant to uh, ease you into bedtime, and then we'll have our new series, a journey into the world of friends, about, about, about friends making a role-playing game about a journey into the world of friends. And I think that's it. Uh, the, I mean, as far as I can remember, so I'm so glad you're here. I work really hard. Oh, no, this is it. That was a be- Welcome to Sleep With Me, the podcast that's here to put you to sleep. And these sponsors are how we're able to do it for free twice a week. Hey, everybody, it's Scoots. I'd love for you to consider becoming a patron. Sleepwithmepodcast.com slash P-A-T-R-O-N. Chloe recently became a patron and said, hey, it feels like I just joined a club full of people who totally get what we go through in the deep, dark night. Chloe pointed out the key thing, which is you have to set an alarm. It took a a week of alarm. So set an alarm, set a reminder right now, write yourself a note and say, I want to join that club that makes, you know, I love making sleep with me. I love being here for you on a regular basis. And one of the ways I'm able to do that and all the other people that work on this show pour our hard work in this podcast because we love doing it. But it wouldn't be possible without the patrons like Chloe. So set an alarm. I would love to mention your name. Would you love to hear your name? Set an alarm right now. Set a reminder. Go ahead. Pick up your phone. Set a reminder tomorrow, 8 a.m. We'll say go to sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron. Check out all the amazing things, you know, all intro episodes, all night episodes, ad free episodes, story only episodes, all intro episodes, subscriber summer bonuses, uh, exclusive episodes. But really, I want you to join this club because you already rely on sleep with me. But if, if you're in a financial position to support the show, set a reminder. Join Join us. Join Chloe and the rest of the patrons. I can't. I, I can't do it without you. I appreciate it so much. I love to talk to talk about you here. So go ahead. Go to sleepwithmepodcast.com/patron. Sleep with me.
com slash patron and then send me a message and let me know. Uh, and let me know what time you set your alarm for. Did you do use a note? Did you throw one of your pillows and block your door leaving your bedroom? What was your strategy? And then what day did you take? And that's why I encourage people so much because, you know, we're here to put people to sleep, uh, you know, later on with the story. But it couldn't do it. But it does take a lot of effort to get people, you know what I'm saying? So thanks, Chloe. And thanks, everybody else. Uh, sleep with me podcast dot com slash patron. All right, everybody, it is time to talk about Helix Sleep, and Helix is having an amazing Labor Day sale. The sales period is from 8 21 23 to 9 10 23, and Helix is offering 25% off all mattress orders using the code Helix Partner 25. That's one word Helix Partner 25. And holy cow, uh, is this a great chance to get a new bed? I've been away from my Helix Dusk Lux for weeks weeks. So good to be back in this bed. And, uh, you know, Helix doesn't just make one mattress. Uh, they make multiple mattresses to fit your needs. 20 unique mattresses, including the award-winning Lux Collection, the newly released Helix Elite Collection, mattress designed for big and tall sleepers, even a mattress made just for kids. And you just take that Helix Sleep Quiz, and you'll find your perfect mattress in under two minutes. Each personalized mattress is shipped straight to your door free of charge. And Helix knows there's no better way to test out new mattress than by sleeping in it in your own home. That's why they offer a 100-night trial and a 10- to 15-year warranty to try out your new Helix mattress. And here's what the quiz finds out. Everybody's unique. Everybody sleeps differently. So Helix has different mattress models to choose from, depending on what your sleep preference and your sleep positions are. When I took that Helix quiz, I got matched with the Helix Dusk. I picked the Dusk Lux. I sleep on my side. I sleep on my stomach. I sleep hot. It's the perfect mattress for me. I know, because I slept in three different mattresses over the past couple weeks. I mean, I was just like, I cannot wait to get home. And not only is it the best mattress I've slept on, but setup is fast and easy. Comes straight to your door in a box, uh, shipped for free. But you got to get in on this sale. If you're hearing my voice, it's 25% off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners in honor of Labor Day. Go to helixsleep.com slash sleep and use the code helixpartner25. This is an amazing offer. Their best offer yet. It won't last long. It's just this Labor Day day sale helixsleep.com slash sleep and use helix partner 25 with helix better sleep starts now thanks everybody all right everybody it is time for the sleepy supporter zone the one part of the podcast where we talk about the deep dark night united we're all in this together and sleep with me depends on direct listener response there's a lot of people who really depend on the ad supported show uh, because they can't afford to pay for the ad free version and this is where we generate that enthusiasm for the people that are doing that making it possible oh boy this is a big one i want to thank lord Laura, who ordered a Helix Midnight, uh, took that Helix quiz at helixsleep.com slash sleep, ordered a Helix, let Helix know about it, let me know about it, and that is a big deal. Uh, Helix is one of our longest sponsors, and uh, so thank you so much, Laura, uh, for supporting Helix, for taking that Helix quiz. I really, really appreciate it. So if you so you want to hear your voice, your, your not your voice, your name on the uh, uh, Sleepy Supporter Zone, check out one of our sponsors, uh, take a quiz, download that ZocDoc app, uh, check out Air Doctor, check out Progressive, our new sponsor, Odoo, Polysleep, Helix, whatever it is. Uh, after you check them out, let the sponsor know about it. Let me know about it, especially if you support the sponsor, because in the end, I mean, obviously that's what they're looking for. But uh, even knowing that people are interested in them and, and taking action is huge. So I appreciate everybody that does that. And you know what? I know now as a fact, there's so many people that appreciate it too, that are, that are, that are really, really thankful because they're getting ready to fall asleep here as we wind down the show. Uh, so thank you so much for taking action. And if you do that, you want to hear your name on the Sleepy Supporter Zone. I forgot. Go, you fill out the form at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash sponsors. Second part of the Sleepy Supporter Zone, you getting the support you need right now. Uh, there's links to resources if you're having a tough time. Uh, you could connect with, including international resources. It's also about being a part of positive change, not just saying Black Lives Matter, not just saying stop AAPI hate, not just saying support Ukraine, but taking action, learning more. There's a couple things we've been doing uh, this year, supporting the Trevor Project. We were supporting the Orlando Park Stop uh, fundraiser. You can still use their link, orlandoparkstop.com slash charity to support the Trevor Project with one-time or monthly support. Or you can join us in building the hygiene kits for the Midnight Mission. 
discussion. Use a link in our show notes. And that's it. Uh, well, Mr. Bard, a lot of people help out on the show. Who are they? Chris Posty Poster Song. Sounds like an earful. Wrote the theme song. Edits episodes. Too. Carl W. The Legend. Also edits episodes. Ashley, Kenny, Scotty, Jennifer. Runner, 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 runner. Eric and the team. Let us down. They're on the website. I am the Mystery Bard. I do the lullabies, yeah. I do commissions at JonathanMan.net. I'll write a song. You see the kindness shine straight on through When the listeners form their own Facebook group Keith, Stacy, Sarah, Julie, and Jennifer These are your moderators Get support, dear Scooter, on Patreon Buy the merch and support the sponsors You can find anything you want At sleepwithmepodcast.com And we're so proud Thanks, Mr. Bard. Uh, yeah, by the way, most comfortable way to listen to Sleep With Me, Sleep With Me branded sleep phones. Just use our link, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash sleep phones, and use Sleep With Me at checkout. What do you say? We slow it down and get on with the show. Uh, hey, are you up all night tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble getting to sleep, trouble staying asleep? Well, welcome this is Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. We do it the bedtime story. All you need to do is get in bed, turn out the lights, and press play. I'm going to do the rest. What I'm going to attempt to do is create a safe place where you could set aside whatever's keeping you awake. It could be thoughts on your mind, thoughts you're thinking about, uh, you know, thinking thoughts, thoughts about the past, the present, the future. So thoughts... Uh, on your mind uh, that you're, you know, coming up over and over again or that are just there. So thoughts, uh, thoughts, feelings, anything you're feeling emotionally that's coming up for you, uh, like uh, relate to the thoughts or feelings that are just there, feelings that are remaining from the day or uh, are anticipating something or they're just baffling. Could be physical sensations changes in time temperature routine whatever it is that's keeping you up the reason i go through some of it i could go through sometimes i go through more sometimes i go through less but the reason i go through it is because i want you to know you're not alone in the deep dark night it may feel lonely and i don't know if this podcast i mean it just it tries to create this spirit where it might feel lonely but it, it doesn't have to feel you know it doesn't have to feel so lonely uh, because I'm here to t- take your mind off stuff, but there's also tons of other people listening right now. And the reason I make the show and the reason a lot of people listening and they're leaning in right now is because they know how it feels. Uh, and I might not know exactly what you're going through. I may have never been through it before, but I can probably relate to how it feels. And if I can't, I bet you there's someone out there who can. And we just know, like, uh, it's not easy, right? Uh, it's tough. It's a tough thing. Uh, but, you know, mind racing, trouble getting to sleep, trouble staying asleep. So I know how it feels, uh, and it's not easy. But it's also the fact of the matter is that you deserve a good night's sleep. It, like, you deserve a place you can get some rest, uh, that you don't have to stress about bedtime or dread it, uh, where bedtime could kind of feel, you could feel neutral about it or even look forward to it. And that's important for me, too, because if your life's more manageable, it means you're going to have more, you know, you like if you, oh, you forget the rest you need, your life's going to be more manageable. And then you're going to have an opportunity to, to do stuff. And that means our world's a better place. If you're out there doing stuff and being you and not the best you, holy cow, is that, you know, that's the kind of pressure I don't particularly go for I mean, for myself. So I'm not worried. I say, if you're just, a, you know, like you say, well, I'm going to do a pretty okay version of myself today. Uh, that's pretty great, uh, beyond great, in my opinion. It's a best life ever or whatever. Be my best self. Well, that's, I don't know. That, like, I don't know if I could do that because if I'm trying to be my best self, then it's like, uh, that takes me out of being my pretty good self. So performative, uh, I get that perform. Like I said, well, then I got to, you know, oh boy, am I being the best? Oh boy, today I'm being the best, best, uh, 
person. I'm, I'm the best at pretending I'm being my best today. So let's just leave it at that. Best performative day, performing as the best day ever at best. I'm best at that. But I'm not really best at it. It's just covering over a vague sense of that I better be. So I don't know. Oh, what was I saying? Oh, I know how it feels in the deep, dark night, and you deserve a good night's sleep. That's why I make the show. That's got some of the stuff that goes through my between my ears, right? And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to send my voice across the deep, dark night. I'm going to use lulling, soothing, creaky, dulcet tones, pointless meanders, and superfluous tangents. All to keep you company and take your mind off stuff so that you could fall asleep. To be your friend in the deep, dark night. A kind of distraction, a low-stakes distraction that's outside of yourself. So whatever's keeping you awake, you say, well, I could listen to this person. He's obviously, like, has some, he's got some quality imperfection going on. Uh, high, like a high-quality imperfection. Highest quality imperfections uh, sold at this store within me. Uh, what, I've, we've talked about this before, like, uh, where you can buy the clothes, uh, regular, cl like, like a regular clothing. He's got, you know, I think I've said that, like, I've got a regular, I'm a regular clothing and sizes on the inside too. And I actually am happy about that. But how, oh, so how is that? Oh, th so that's kind of where creaky dulcet tones and pointless meanders come from too. My voice is not traditionally soothing. I don't really get to the point. I'm kind of drifting around. And that's other things when, you get, when you're when you new. Everybody really that's listening is so glad you're here. Right? right? My regular listeners, everybody's fishes and pets, they're so happy because we, you're welcomed in here. It really, we're, we're glad to see you. And people are padding spaces that are within their vicinity, but, you know, at a distance where you could feel comfortable. And they say, hey, go ahead, take up one of those spaces if you want, or just look at it from afar, because we've been there too. And th so a couple of things that take you some getting used to, though, like I said, like one, you're probably doubtful, skeptical, frustrated if you found your way to this podcast, because you probably tried a bunch of different stuff. You've probably paid for a bunch of different stuff. You've probably uh, gotten advice, and maybe that's how you searched or you found the show or you heard about it, and you say, what is this thing I'm listening to? And that's an understandable, that's how most people, what most people think when they listen. So the show does take some getting used to. It takes two or three tries. It's just what most listeners say before you realize, oh, one, this is a podcast I just barely listen to. I can kind of just nod along or vaguely, you know, I have a vague sense that you're talking, but I don't know what you're talking about. I have a confidence that you're going to be here talking, but I'm not sure I'm confident in the content of, uh, you'd say you're probably one of those people that someone that says, I like the cut of your jib. They don't say that to you. And I say, no, cause I have an irregular, if I had a jib, it would be irregular. I have the, the boy with the irregular jib. Uh, that's what they'd say about me, but, uh, they say, is that Jif, is your jib covered in Jif peanut butter? And I'd say, yeah, I was hoping, I, I, I realized after I started doing it that, uh, that, uh, it was not going to help with the, uh, it's funny, you know, it makes dogs like lick their mouth more. It's sticky. Also not great for, you know, I, I, I thought, you know, I just started doing it. I, I knew it was, I knew. Yes, that is, oh, yes, that is peanut butter on my jib. Or that no, more, most of they'd say, I don't like the cut of that jib, son. Also, it's covered in peanut, it, usually they'd say, first they'd say, how, is that, wait a second, is that peanut butter on your jib? Covering your jib, it'd have to be a lot for someone to notice. Uh, so maybe we, that's what this podcast tries to do, is so, to tr turn that around and say, Wow, is that peanut butter on your jib? Holy mackerel, that must have taken a lot of work. How'd you do that? And I said, well, one, you know, one, one, knife, one spoonful or knife full at a time. Actually, I used a uh, silicone, whatever those things are called to get when you try to get cake out of a bowl, cake batter out of a bowl. And I, I used that. Wow, that's a great idea. What about a spa one of those things you spackle stuff with? I thought about that, but it wouldn't fit in the peanut butter jar. Wow, that's impressive. A jib covered in peanut butter. Holy wow, never seen it before. And uh, 
Smells great right now. And that's what this podcast, this, that's the spiritual uh, version of this podcast or the spiritual, you know what I mean? That's what I'm looking to do here is set up so that could happen to you with your own self-talk at some point or the way you talk to somebody else. Uh, you said, when I told you, you know, to, 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 to uh, whatever, tighten up that jib, I didn't think you'd tighten it up with peanut butter, but obviously you had some kind of vision, not the same vision as I have, but uh, it's impressive without a doubt. And uh, luckily that wasn't a regular jib, so it was, it was a practice jib, so that's, that's fine. And this is actually like uh, whatever. That's a, it's a jib on an artist's installation in landlocked area. So no wrong ideas. That's kind of what this episode hopefully will be about. Not content-wise, but that the characters believe. Okay, so whatever I said, I don't even know. Oh, you don't really listen to me. Then I went on a tangent about that's why you don't really. You say, okay. I have no I, I, Does he even know? Is that a saying? I like to cut your jib. I don't know. Is there more than one way to cut a jib? I think it's how tight you have it, whatever. It's not because uh, you trim a sail, right? Huh, interesting. You trim a sail, but you cut a jib. Do you slice a, a spinnaker? This is my uh, yachting based, sailing based, uh, you, like puns. Uh, those, uh, I'm out of them already. What do they call that? Do you call, you do call from a crow's nest, I would believe, uh, or you call from a crow's nest. And, uh, you know, we uh, don't gather in the, ga don't dally in the galley. There you go. That's it. That's peak. Sleep with me has finally peaked. Uh, the gold, the golden age is over. That was it. An accidental pun. Like I'm hungry. Please don't dally in the galley. Okay. So now that's, th this is when you, there's rare moments where I feel really like you could, you could probably even sense that there is some sort of smug satisfaction, even though it was an accidental pun that came out of nowhere. At whatever part of my brain came up with, I said, wow, that's pretty, that's decent. I don't know if that's a pun, but it rhymes and it's amusing. Uh, okay. So don't really listen to me though. Like, cause that stuff happens once every thousand episodes. Maybe best case. Uh, uh, so that I mean, it won't be happening. It'll be a while. Next time I'll say, don't dawdle in the galley. No, don't uh, waste time. Are you perpetually in the galley? No, that doesn't work. Are you, uh, let's, should we rally in it? No, that doesn't work. Galleys are too small for a rally. Sally in the galley, that just rhymes. It's not actually, it doesn't fit. Okay, so this is a podcast you don't listen to. Believe it or not, it doesn't put you to sleep either. I mean, you believe that? Uh, I'm here. There's no pressure to fall asleep. The reason the shows are designed to be over an hour is uh, so that there's no pressure to fall asleep. There's people who are listening who can't sleep or who need a break during the day. And I'm here to the very end, whether you're awake or asleep. And that's what ends up kind of working. It's like, oh, I don't need to listen. I don't need to worry about falling asleep. Then I can fall asleep. I, I don't understand it either. I've just been doing it for a long time. So uh, no pressure to listen, no pressure to fall asleep. I'm here to be your boar friend, your boar bay, your boar sib, your boar bud, your boar best, your neighbor. Just to take your mind off of stuff while you fall asleep. To be your boar bee. Your boar bee with the peanut butter jib. And, uh, so those are two things, uh, other things that can throw people off other than most people don't like me. Oh, if you loathe me, it might be a little late. You don't have to let me know. You could just go to sleep with me podcast.com slash no thank you. And there's tons of other sleep podcasts and sleepy stuff on there you could use. Uh, cause I still think you deserve a good night's sleep, whether you like me or not. Uh, there's a lot of people who like, don't like me that listen to the show on a regular basis. So. Uh, it could work for you, but if it definitely isn't like try one of those other shows, there's a lot of great stuff out there. Um, structure, the show also throws people off, uh, but there's an, it's a reason there's a show structured in the way it is. Show starts off with a greeting, friends beyond the binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. So if you'll seen and welcomed in, you say, okay, I might check that out. Then there's an intro. Oh no. Then there's support. So the show can be free. Then there's a long meandering intro. 
uh, that uh, some people miss out on because they don't like the support. And then they try to fast forward through the intro and they think the intro is part of the support. But the intro is a show within a show. It's about 15 to 20 minutes long. And it's like what the most people listen to because for some listeners, they skip it. For some listeners, they fall asleep. But for most listeners, it's what eases them into bedtime. It's what buffers them having their daytime and going to sleep. Uh, eases you into bedtime, like a slow landing or something. Because uh, that's what's been shown to work. So you could listen to the intro while you're getting ready for bed, while you're doing some sort of other chill activity, doodling. I wouldn't recommend peanut buttering a jib anywhere near bedtime. That, like, uh, you know, no peanut butter in bed. I mean, I think that's, or jibs. Uh, I mean, unless you're with someone named Jib, whether a, a, a human partner or some sort of pet companion. I mean, that's a good name for a pet. Any, almost most pets could be named Jib. And you say, like, this would be, this would be a typical life in a sleep with me fan. They'd say, what's the name of your, um, your cat, dog, fish, you know, other, you know, type of pet? Uh, oh, it's Jib. Oh, Jib, are you into sailing? No. Um, and then you start giggling as you try to figure out, no, I listened to a sleep podcast and he was talking about peanut buttering in a regular Jib once. Uh, then he was trying to finish up the intro and then he went on another tangent about naming pets Jibs. Not jibs, but, you know, multi if you had a bunch of pets named jib, you'd say I'm surrounded by a bunch of jibs. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so that's why, my, that's why my pet here is named jib. Is it a capital J? No, actually, it's a, I like to do a lowercase j, too, just to make it even more confusing. Uh, wait a second, did you say this person knew about a regular, did they get a discount when they bought the irregular jib? Uh, is that why they peanut buttered it? I don't know. I fell asleep, to be honest. I have no, all I know is I think that's what he was talking about, but he could have been talking about something else. Okay. Interesting. Nice to meet you and nice to meet you, Jib. And then the Jib, Jib would, you know, look, I mean, I think that I'm not kidding. They're, like I'd say that's a pretty decent pet name. If you were going to, uh, oh, for pet, for dating, some part of my brain said, well, Jibby Poo, I think would be good. So, yeah, I guess you could use that. Uh, um, okay, so what was I saying? Oh, the intro goes on and on and on to ease you into bedtime, but it's also different every time because I truly believe, even if this makes me da the Don Quixote of jibs, that, I mean, which pretty much in this situation, they line, I mean, my jib jibs misaligned, but uh, that's how, I think that's how we got on this su subject. Uh, can you believe all these tangents came out of talking about alignment? So holy mackerel. But, uh, oh, to ease you into bedtime. Oh, it's different every time because it's my belief that whatever part of us keeps us awake, uh, it, it's kind of craving our attention and it adjusts. So if, if the intro is the same every time, it just wouldn't work. Uh, that's my belief. Uh, that's why I put so much work into the show because I believe in it and I believe in the goals of the show to make you feel at home, and put you to sleep. And I put my heart and my soul into this podcast. I do take it extremely seriously, um, but I have a lot of fun with it too. So uh, that's why the intro goes on and on and on. Then there'll be support. Again, so the podcast could be free or paying for it is optional. And then um, there'll be a bedtime story. to be our episodically modular series, uh, world of, Journey into the World of Friends. And then there's some thank yous at the end. So it's the structure of the show. It's when I make the show. I'm so glad you're here. I mean, especially tonight, all these regular listeners and new listeners. I mean, that was fun uh, in a fairly sleepy way, uh, peanut buttering up those jibs. Uh, so I'm glad you're here. Appreciate your time. I work really hard here and I strive, and I hope I can help you fall asleep. Uh, so one more time, thanks again for coming by. And here's a couple ways we're able to do it for you for free twice a week.
Sleep With Me is brought to you by Progressive. Progressive helps you compare direct auto rates from a variety of companies so you can find a great one, even if it's not with them. Quote today at Progressive.com to find a rate that works with your budget. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Comparison rates not available in all states or situations. All right, everybody, welcome to our ongoing episodically modular series, Journey into the World of Friends which is an episodically modular series, which means you can kind of listen to it in any order. Uh, the characters are going to kind of catch, do the play setting and set everything up for us. So, yeah, you could listen to the first two episodes. This is episode three, I believe, when I'm recording this, uh, of Journey into the World of Friends. And, uh, yeah, so I'm glad you're here. What else do you need to know? Yeah, I mean, just listen to it. This is like, even if you listen to this as a one off episode, particularly this style, it's just going to be friends sitting around a table discussing a game and making a game and kind of playing the game. So, uh, um, yeah, it'll be uh, fun. And, uh, yeah, let's just see how it goes. And now. To set everything up, our Hollywood announcer, Mr. Antonio Banderas. This is the friends behind the binary. This is the ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. It's time to be in a world of friendship. Hippie hooray. Yeah. Wow. I feel like I'm I'm under, I'm I'm with, I feel like I'm, uh, uh, a sphere, like, a, I don't know, I thought I was going to say something about, like, a moon orbiting your planet of friendship uh, joyously. Uh, but, uh, yeah, like, uh, welcome to uh, Journey into the World of Friends, everybody. Uh, thanks and good night. Okay, hey, this is uh, me, Hamwata, uh, wizard and uh, uh, friend. And I'm just going to run through my notes. I'm glad everybody everybody looks great. Glad everybody's here. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I forgot. Eleanor, you're going to take over. Uh, so uh, go go ahead. I, I know we've done a lot of work uh, that is coming together. Go ahead, Eleanor. Yeah, hello, I'm Eleanor, and I'm a nurse uh, healer of the free, Three Florences. And I'm here as... Uh, you know, an interesting position as we both uh, discover a world that we, like, uh, I don't know, we're trying to put these pieces together. And I feel like I'm in-world putting these pieces together. And we could be anywhere in that world, uh, but we're together as a party now. And we had some tasks uh, that I wanted to run through, and then we'll kind of pass it around the table. And in a more informal uh, style, I'd like to try just as an experiment. This isn't a, a like the best. It's just a, I feel like we have a lot of material to go through and even more supplemental material uh, that we may not even get to. But so we left off. Uh, we had each been kind of doing different tasks. Let me just run through the tasks from last week was... Uh, Zell had been working on the world. I was working on the villain, which were kind of complementary. Uh, Lord Von Chill and Granada of Dharma were working on the towns and rumors and party motivations. And M. Wata kind of was working on more of the cam- cam- campaign specifics in the first encounter. And it's interesting, like where we left off last week, according to my notes, and this week is uh, we needed to make sure there's credible, uh, credible challenge or T H R E A T S, and that uh, there's a villain or uh, like opposition uh, creating that situation. And we started off kind of the week, and my notes kind of progress through the week. Uh, looking at uh, kind of getting the party to choose a side, which is kind of developed, but where we left it when we left off kind of the beginning of our work was that maybe there'd be three sides. Uh, the park itself was going to become a force, uh, which, and again, fits in with what interests us about this park. And as adventurers, the Baron of the Boyle could be one uh, choice uh, the party may align themselves with or be motivated by. 
And then lastly, we had a, the idea of a other we, leader, magic council. We weren't sure. And then we asked, like, again, how is this kind of uh, a character we've been working on, this opposition leader to the Baron of the Boil, an opposing force? And uh, Zell, do you want to take it now or later? Uh, okay, I'll keep going. Okay, so we thought that there is a, they were maybe a magic user. Or uh, or uh, maybe there was some sort of, uh, which I learned later is called an artificer or artificer, but we were thinking some sort of mechanical person, uh, like someone that could have power over machines. And that kind of, to be honest, that idea kind of fell by the wayside, though we did do more supplemental research that I don't know if we'll get to this week uh, thinking about that. And then we kind of went into, the, the again, these were just our basic discussions as the week uh, grew, grew on. Don't worry, uh, everybody, we will get to the no bad idea section, which was kind of led by Wada, Granada, and Lord Von Chill. That is not supplemental material. We may not, don't worry, we will get to that. I see you moving in your seats. Uh, but first we got to the point of like, okay, so what do the players want? What does the opposing force want and the representative of the opposing force? And if this also the idea, and again, I was one had frame, if someone not of our group is playing this campaign, when it's finished, obviously, like could they choose their own motivations? Like are we building out characters with a specific backstory on a rail? And I think we kind of all decided, also in the vein of no bad ideas, that uh, player choice would be uh, interesting. But again, that the DM, this would create a situation for a DM to either improvise or prepare once they know who their party is. Because at first we were like, okay, it could be adventure, uh, fame and fortune, or fame or fortune. Loyalty to the Baron of the Boil, loyalty to the park, uh, maybe some other opposing force. And then we got back to the town, and uh, who wants to take it from here? Granada, Lord, Lord Von Chill. Yes, this is Granada of Darmok. Uh, so, so we thought about, if, first, what we did earlier in the week, if we're progressing, is uh, using the Oracle for the DM. To, and I don't think we return to this actually. So this is great that we're discussing it. It's uh, the oracle. They don't remember what we talked about last week, but that the oracle would be, or the oracle figure we're using as an oracle. It was a Sultana, which was some sort of a mechanical uh, thing, which is imbued with magic. And I think it's important to know that, like, uh, the DM would be able to choose what kind of magic that was. So there is some flexibility in there. You know, is it powered by the park? Is it a representative of the park? Or is it a representative of some other magic? But at first, the DM could you also use the the, or the, the Sultana to, to, to determine what does a party want. But later in the week, we kind of decided, um, and I kind of forget, so we'll return to that. But that's where we started out. Like, wh maybe they even talk to the uh, Sultana. What do you most desire? And we also came back to this idea with Leader X. Uh, is the Sultana warning them about Leader X not to be trusted? Also, is Leader X listening in to these conferences with Sultana? Is Leader X influencing Sultana? Like, has Leader X just been sending people on pointless things? Uh, so we, what do we got? Uh, Okay, then the idea also came, and I guess we're somewhat undecided on this, uh, because. It, but again, it, it, it's good to have it as an optional thing, again, for lower-level party members, or maybe the parties want to level up from three to four or five. But what started at the beginning of the, our, our research and idea pitching is a mechanical, like a, like a some, some sort of... A, like childlike being that had left the world of friends uh, and was visiting at only certain times the, the, the water side. And we kind of played around with them. We we're a little bit unsure in how that would play into uh, the party motivations and uh, 
again, how do we do this or how would the DM do this in an efficient way? Because we're, our, you know, as our party is already kind of projecting itself into this uh, first and second encounters without it detracting from the game too much, right? Uh, but also it's, it's really cool. It's cool, I, cool ideas. Uh, so we like it. Uh, and we'll return to it later in our discussion. But that's it for my report currently. Okay, Zell, why don't you um, come in, because this is about the world and the, the uh, opposing force. Uh, okay, um, this is Zell. Okay, so we definitely were like, okay, um, I don't know where we left off, but that basically whatever's happening in the park, um, well, I'll just go with what we have, right? And then it develops from there. Okay, so we, we knew that... Uh, this uh, force that's not the Baron of the Boil, former partner of the Baron of the Boil, was where I think we left it off, uh, who had helped, uh, do, like, stop this, uh, like, this soft, this velvet, revel like, vel like, made a, what seemed like a battle more velvet, but brought the Baron of the Boil into power, was this central water exchange area which was probably powered in a way and built in a way that it could last without very much maintenance, but was very well protected and where all the water passes from the north uh, into the so southern regions. Now, I don't know if this is where we were last week, but that this whole thing is just a distraction in a sense or a perk uh, of what is actually happening. And it was the idea that this uh, opposing character would be a magic user and go back to the actual lore of the park and what we experienced as adventurers that uh, there is this well or portal to another magical realm underneath the park that has leaked out and brought parts of, to the park to sentience. Uh, so it's a world that is not our own or a power that is beyond our understanding. And so that actually what is happening is because of so much of this, uh, well, that there's a large amount of water in the way. So now this whole thing of controlling the water is also because the, the, um, this character needed to remove water so they could get to what was underneath one of these lakes or canals or something. Or dra drain. Well, I guess later, um, Wada came up with the idea of draining some of these natural swamps. Yeah, it says here to open up some secret passageway. Uh, otherwise, this leader would have kind of helped quietly uh, kept the peace. Uh, but now they want to drain certain areas to get to this. So I don't. We don't have a total way, a connection to that. Well, I guess we kind of have a motivation, but not a connection. Now, the downside, the generalized downside of that is if they do do that, not only will they will they think they'll achieve a power, they'll also awaken a powerful source of non-goodness beyond the imagination of our world. Okay, then we had a note of like, is this something we have to witness as a part of the party motivation that also makes this idea of a credible threat, right? And... Uh, uh, again, and then it became the timing of this, but an idea of a high tower where they could see one of the swamps uh, or a southern lake or a canal. And then uh, again, then we came up with this idea of the Baron of the Boil, which kind of ties nicely together. I don't know. Do we lead right into that? Let me see the next notes. Okay, actually, it led us into kind of getting to know this, who this wizard was, of how they would have this power, which we'll talk about in a minute. And so this also kind of goes, ties back into the park as one of the choices of who to work for. And maybe each member of the party decides separately because the park, I mean, in the history, in the, in the real lore, in the real, what we believe, a lot of us believe, and even in our own game, uh, like that, uh, the park somehow has a mostly nurturing, whatever power is giving sentience to the park, it is like a, 
like a like a wet it's not powerful but it is kind and nurturing for the most part or in need of kind and nurturing behavior uh but it's also a kind of power that needs assistance by human means it needs uh, adventurers to help it uh, and empower it versus again this outside force uh both in our world represented by this character we're working on in some sort of external entity, which may or may not ever, uh, this is just us as a storyteller talking about it. Does that entity in this particular adventure have to be acknowledged in a concrete way? And also the kind of world, you know, as I want to, I like to get into the, uh, the, some of it is like that. Yeah. Maybe the good, the park itself is like a cork and, and the, like those corks that we learned about in, uh, like basic archaeology classes from the old, old world was that uh, the corks were porous. And, you know, we see it in trees and stuff like that. But so that uh, some goodness could leak out. But the cork was corking something much more, much different. But somehow the goodness is what's leaking out mostly into the park and bringing life uh, to the park. And again, a way that is, I mean, that kind of aligns with everything. Yeah, no, it doesn't quite make sense. We don't understand it all. Even the most powerful wizards in our world would say they don't understand. Uh, but yeah, what else? Uh, the park is real and alive, uh, surrounded by living things. Uh, oh, and to go back to this uh, opposing force, they want to blow the cork off. And whatever's at the bottom of the jar also wants the cork blown off. And I think that's it for me for now. Uh, who wants to kind of take uh, Lord Von Chill? Yes, Lord Von Chill here. So uh, with all that in mind, we arrived at the idea of us as backup, right? So we we're going to get to the notes. Oh, it's coming up. Oh, wow. So I get to go through this part. Uh, very cool. Very cool. Okay, so... But overall, we came up with the idea that uh, switching from this is a new idea, right? That uh, we are backup. So one of the things the Baron of Boyle assigned us was backup as to 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 go in to uh, find the Baron of the Boyle's son, who the Baron of the Boyle assumes is either somewhere in the world of friends trying to get to the uh, this character or being held by this character. But the Baron of the Boyle has sent in three or four ships uh, full of, uh, like, transports, uh, full of the Baron of the Boyle's uh, troops, right? And we're just back up in case that doesn't work out. Now we have our own motivations, obviously, and our own reasons to adventure. Uh, they all... Uh, uh, care, we're trying to control, uh, trying to, okay, uh, I don't recognize any of this stuff, but okay, so, uh, so then we came up with this idea that makes sense of starting to look at who is this, uh, that's doing all this, uh, what are they up to, and the idea of them being a dragonborn, but not maybe knowing it, uh, which again gets into kind of the uniqueness of our campaign, in our world, like, so not uh, breaking any rules, but bending them. And maybe the, this dragonborn, I mean, this is where everything sprung out of, right, is these other things, that, that they're being told a uh, tale by some maybe false dragon or real dragon that is un corked in this other world. Uh, and that the park and the water is what's holding them back. And then the idea that the water itself is one of the corks, uh, they think that's an M. Water thing. Okay, so that this would be a person that considers themselves uh, part, like a hu a hu like a anthropomorphized, uh, like a lizard being, right? Uh, and that they've always, so when we started to get into back to where we were, okay, this is somebody that's always played by the rules. They've always excelled. And they've tried to follow customs and beliefs uh, 
But uh, and so they've developed a very self-righteous and sanctimonious personality. But that's just sitting on top of this deep fear that they never fit in uh, because one lizard being lizard beings are treated kindly or they're looked upon as different. Uh, they're dragon born, which isn't really a thing that's well known about because there are the dragons are just a stuff of legends right in our world. So the idea that you could be a dragon, uh, a part, part dragon is not a something, but that that would be a motivator for the character of like a, a disconnection from our world and dissatisfaction. But that by covering it up, by being excelling at most things, playing by the rules, but then being self-righteous and sanctimonious when uh, other people don't follow the rules, but then, you, you know, developing that kind of attitude. And that's when the idea came as a group. Uh, it was a really good idea of like, wait a second. Okay, so this why would this person partner with the Baron of the Boil? And again, with the Baron of the Boil's son being a part of this, is that uh, they were, they were, the Baron of the Boil has been there, they've been the Baron of the Boil's foundling in a sense. Uh, and the, or their sponsor or something. So the Baron of the Boil was uh, like a parent like figure for them or a patron, but not in a, um, not in not in a not on either side of the nurturing side, uh, more of like on the middle side. So they didn't give them this nurturing, but they did give them. They sent them to the best schools, uh, then sent them to the best wizard, you know, wizard school or whatever world of sorcery, and uh, invested in them and their potential. And their skills, so the Baron of the Boyle believed in them greatly, and maybe the Baron of the Boyle was just misguided, not knowing they needed a little bit more loving and tenderness and understanding, or maybe, you know, maybe nothing could be done. But that uh, that also creates a tension with this character uh, whose name is Vidul, right? Vidul of the Boyle. But then we change it to Vidul the Green, and that there's this tension between Vidul and the Baron of the Boyle's son. Uh, because uh, the Baron of the Boyle's son was not a, not a wizard and lived at home, you know, was schooled at home and stuff like that. So spent a lot of time with the Baron, which is also creates this interesting thing of in a hurry to get away, where Vidul became nearly an equal partner with the Baron back in when they were running the underworld, right? And then as they, like, came up with this plan, I would assume the Vidul was a part of uh, this plan to create the peace, but also at some point, unaware to the Baron of the Boil, was this other plan had developed. Okay, now we switch, uh, we switch uh, tone. Uh, uh, Wada, why don't you take over? Okay, this is, we we're kind of jumping around. This is kind of like, we're just, this was a basic brainstorm on farmland, or who, what party motivations there could be, for at least for our party, like the Lord Von Chill, uh, that when this happens, Lord Von Chill owns a lot of farmland and will be, you know, very impacted by the lack of water. Also, maybe loyal to the Baron of the Boil because of some sort of deal made. Uh, and Granada would, of Darmac is a part of this guild or underworld, so has a connection. Um, so is loyal to the Baron of the Boil in that sense. Or maybe even has some promise. Uh, we thought about Zell as being uh, of the people that transport everything by boat through these canals, uh, supporting those workers and people that work on the farms. Wada of like the curiosity of water and magic at play and the natural flow of water versus the current flow of water versus the need for water. And... Uh, uh, Eleanor, kind of the idea of the balance of the Florences and ensuring the balances of Florences. Okay, so then again, uh, we go back to Vidul, 
uh, this is a little bit repetitive, but yeah, the, the, like dragonborn or is a person, uh, but there's no dragons in our world. And this big reveal will be some sort of mist dragon spell that we've never seen in our world. Yeah, I think this is all uh, best schools saw uh, like uh, the rules. Uh, were, the rules were for those in power. Uh, but Vidul is smarter, but also well, like very rich, uh, or, or Baron of the Boil is, but they could never fit in. Uh, originally, maybe even the Baron tried to deny them and say, make your way, don't make your way as part of the underworld, but they wanted it and proved their way. And uh, they definitely feel superior to people, rules and customs, uh, uh, they feel left out, maybe inferior, a little bit angry and pointless. Um, uh, what if I'm just, ha who am I? These are deep down questions. Maybe even this belief I am a bird, but like there are dragons. I mean, and again, this could be, be proven to be real and false or full, you know, maybe is this a real dragon talking to them or a false dragon? You know, whole thing about family and stuff like that. And, okay, now we get into the next encounter, which I guess I'll keep going on. So the polywogs, because uh, this kind of goes into this idea. So we knew the polywogs had a deal with Vidul uh, to, to watch their territory for anybody coming in. It's a simple deal. You could have this territory outside of the ride in the loading area. It doesn't have any importance to Vidul. If anybody comes there, you capture them. And you give them to me. And so but so then the idea of our first encounter, one of the ways it could play out, or most of the way it could play out, is that we were captured or we, you know, make peace. Uh, because it, it did seem very unlikely you'd have to do the giant toad and the two giant frogs. Even if a party was to get through that, then they would have the polywogs who have a setup on the inside. So it's like, will it be a peaceful negotiation? Depending on the party skills, they could choose to keep battling all the way through or to rest. I don't know. There's a lot of ways it could play out. But the, the, the one way, and again, we could adjust the story. But as far as the story goes, I think like them being captured, because again, if someone wants to blast through this whole attraction, we, they could do that. I mean, I don't know how successful they would be. Um, but the idea, at least of setting this up of like, okay, so we're, then we're captured. Then we spend the night and there's other polywogs either in the room with us or in adjoining rooms where we're, where the polywogs are keeping us, but they're different. They're d dressed differently than the polywogs that have us. If we could establish a magical or actual way to communicate with these other polywogs, they would tell us, uh, Hey, we're trying to warn these other polywogs, but you know, they're so we're so territorial. That's why we're here. Um, polywogs are hyper local, right? So uh like these polywogs wanna tell the other polywogs that this like the izzard cannot be trusted and that their swamp has been is being drained. And that's why they're here. They came to warn them that it was gonna happen to them next in that they can't trust the izzard and that's what where they escaped from and but then they were captured by these alligators and also they can't communicate like because they're hyper local they communicate in different ways so it's just one opportunity to to uh and again depending on the dm they could really make this like uh, over the top a trial or whatever or you could do an, like a sneak out uh and use them or you could negotiate and say, hey, by the way, we're able to communicate with these uh, polywogs and you. Um, and this is what we know. Like, are you going to keep tr trusting this Vidul or not? We really don't have something where they get caught. And uh, right now they're being held for an interminable amount of time. And I think that can help because uh, it doesn't make sense for the campaign for them to get brought to Vidul at this point. So again, like we could just keep it doing it. Uh, I don't know. Th that's like a little bit of area where it's like uh, we would be forcing the player's hands somehow. 
Okay, so who wants to take, uh, uh, Zell, why don't you take this, uh, like, uh, this is all when we're had our Nova, this is tons of stuff for, for the next few encounters and stuff like that. I have no bad ideas, uh, concepts, ideas, rooms, uh, no bad ideas. Because, Zell, you had one unique idea. Yeah, I mean, I saw it would be fun to do one-off uh, shot campaigns or rooms. I mean, I know it's not time for that, but... uh uh oh like uh so they put pumpkin i put pumpkin character and then maybe a holiday character but uh so that was one one idea then so you want to just keep going okay so then um what if there's another some sort of other character like a uh, anarchy type that wants to just uh oh th i'm just going through that okay so that wants to get rid of the whole attraction Maybe there's a cat person who settles disputes, or do we have to settle disputes? Some sort of mechanic, uh, a positive mechanic who needs parts. Uh, so these are other possible quests within the or rooms, uh, like or a room full of all broken characters, uh, baby, baby, berry poo. Uh, oh, so maybe there's who wants to like rally the ride uh, to stop the duel. Maybe there's some humans that are in the ride, former workers, uh, somehow, uh, oh, like, uh, characters who think they're people from the, like, have taken on the personality of the people that built the park or the mythology behind the park, uh, toy maker, question mark, a chaos character, uh, oh, there's that Mad Hatter pirate, uh, oh, da this was a funny idea, I think, uh, dancers, their inner group uh, that's exclusive and in, in something, and they have a leader. Like, uh, we heard about some of those. That was like, a, was that a belief system they had in the before time? That dancers were, like, you danced to grass? There was dance-offs, right? Dance duels. Giant walrus uh, who's grouchy and not nice but could be useful. A voice of reason. No revolve the ride secrets. Twins who uh, repair and break rides, prankster, pacifist, uh, uh, ethereal beings, uh, a leader who no one can find. Uh, I don't know what that says. Uh, then, oh, like a, we find a cache of old security items, laser beams or stuff like that. Knights, hidden rooms, oh, laboratory. Oh, may or a wizard place where they're trying to uh, maybe something from b the before time, or the wizards have something set up. Uh, oh, like that uh, other one they had this. Uh, it was Desmond, was it? There was some sort of like uh, place hidden where this person Desmond lived, who changed a clock or something. Uh, third party. Oh, there maybe like some sort of other thing reprogramming the rides, or maybe that's just happening, or it's a malfunction. Humans. Okay, that's we had that Tesla coil, acid, flame, uh, foam. Uh, second. Oh, like oh, security, lost archives. Oh, different things that people have made. You know, to catch people. Hidden messages, hidden map, uh, noise, uh, goal, like, oh, a, a goal, like some sort of key or security pass, uh, something that seems like it's good, like whether it be a weapon or a treasure that's not, uh, oh, some sort of robotic, uh, like a combination of like a, ro like a suit or, um, like some sort of being that's a combination of beings, hidden vaults. Control room, like a secondary control room, uh, like uh, organic beings that have been changed by maybe the non-positive part of the park or some sort of power source, oh, robotic guards, uh, reprogrammed dolls or uh, ones that have been taken over by ethereal beings. Uh, some other smaller villain that has to control of tech or other beings. Oh, then this, we switch back. So does somebody like want to take it from here, Eleanor? Okay. Yeah, this is, uh, okay. This was in the middle of the no bad ideas. This was an important idea that came up. Polywogs 
we're not keeping people out of so there's one entrance so they have the secret door where they leave the people they captured for Vidul. But it's like the rest of the ride is blocked off, right? And impassable. But the, obviously there has to be one secret way in, which we're thinking is actually the, the normal entrance to the ride. But when we finally negotiate, however it is with the polywogs, you're going to have to get this information or discover it, which would be really hard. They say, oh, no, no, we're not keeping people out. We're keeping them in. Uh... Okay, someone control magic, uh, tricksters. We kind of covered this. Uh, C L O W N S. Oh, animated objects. Uh, yeah, again, ones that are like been taken out of our control or some sort of self replicating code. Animatronics from other parts of the park that have come here. Uh, the, 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 like in, like, uh, the, 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 like different characters, the child boy, um, and then, oh yeah, like, oh, do we have, like, is there any things that involve puzzle solving, self, escape, like getting away? Is this the one part of the ride or the part of the adventure we're trying to sneak out, uh, negotiations? is always a popular thing between two groups trying to make them work together. Uh, is there some sort of uh, way we could use something within here, within the attraction or one of the rooms to sabotage the duel? Obviously we have to find and, uh, one of our main tasks, we're not even really tasked with stopping the duel, right? Is, is getting the Baron of the Boyle's son. So I guess that could be part of the getaway one. Parts needed, find parts or pets or lost item, missing parts, repair something, uh, or some sort of resource. Uh, like, And I think it would be nice, too. I mean, again, in the spirit of our belief systems, like indirectly of like, what if one of the things is that we're allowing them to live in peace within this world? Because we do know, and again, as part of our discussions, like these characters can't really exist outside of their territory either. Like they have to live within their attraction for the most part, uh, so that they could live happy and free. Uh, what else we got? Uh, post, uh, go, uh, truth, uh, secrets. Oh, secrets from past, long ago. Okay, maybe we build towards some big thing between Vidul and the characters of the ride. Uh, stop the war, save the ride, find a lost toy, factions of characters. What else we got? A lot of this. Uh... Okay, so then, um, uh, Granada, do you want to take it? Uh... Okay, so we do want to, um, so again, we go back to this polywogs. If we work a negotiation with the polywogs is successful or whatever, we do want to get into the ride, obviously, because we learn that, yeah, that's the way to get to where we're going. And again, I think we didn't establish that uh, the duel is using characters from the rides. The characters won't know this yet, or will they? Because if we go up on that tower, is that in the notes? Uh, I just want to make sure that we see, maybe do we see, but somehow, or, or with the the, um, the child type thing, that we learn that, uh, um, that the parts of the rides are being built to do work for Vidul because this is like whatever, draining the swamp it takes a lot of effort. Um. Okay, but they also tell us, yeah, the, oh, the, the Hollywogs, they don't want to leave the load area. They just want to leave, live there. Uh, uh, the toys can't really leave, or the, whatever, the, the, character, the ride characters can't really, really leave the ride. Um, but we don't, want, we don't need to go in there. We're happy where we are, and we, they don't really want to come out. But we, if they do, we tend to have, we've had conflicts. So uh, also maybe the idea that the toys can't really swim. I don't know. That idea came up. Uh, okay, so then um, we're back up. Uh, 
Okay, so show of strength fails. Does the leader act also turn on the characters, forces them to make a move? So that is basically, uh, should we, uh, I'll leave that to you, Wada. Um, okay, so what if a mecha ma mechanical child, so now we're going back to these motivations in the town. Is uh, the mechanical child gives gives us ex okay? So this is the oracle versus the mechanical child. Do we need both? Uh, we haven't decided that, but this is still in the kind of this is in the, this is where the no bad ideas becomes. Let's focus on the ideas, uh, and so then it's like, oh, does the or oracle give them emotional quests, and the child gives them specific quests? Uh, uh, and uh, so, if the, and then we started to think about hey, we we did a lot of research on famous uh, dragons, and what if one of them, someone of them, could be an archetype for Vidul? Uh, so, does the Oracle give them a goal aligned with their emotional needs of each member or the party as a whole? Maybe prints out magical cards of a person. So, this was, I think this was a good idea that we should keep. Is uh, like to, to to like again to kind of jump back to earlier is like oh so if um Lord Von Chill sees farmland withering he's going to be more motivated and sees like a sad person at the marketplace with nothing to sell that you know has to pay a tithe to Lord Von Chill and how that affects you know someone that I might associate with because then they have nothing to negotiate. Uh, so we see a farmer, a soldier, a boat captain, mother, child, a group, a town, uh, feeling the impacts of this water shortage. And maybe there's even a subtext. You say, well, I don't know if a water shortage would be that bad of what we're seeing on the card. But that, uh, oh, because there's also this other force that's being released. And then the idea that the mechanical child is not a child, not a toy, like not actually, a, a, it's a, a projection, and it appears outside the gates full moon. This is the idea we kind of basically came up with. Uh, it disappears if you approach it according to the troops and people in the town, but it's talking to itself. Uh, so maybe the characters have to use stealth or magic to approach and listen in. And then maybe going through our no bad ideas list, uh, maybe the child uh, or this character, whatever, that's what we're calling it, the child uh, kind of tells them the plight of some of the toys or the treasures or the secrets, uh, the fact that they are working. So maybe there's some sort of exchange of information, but motivating information like, uh, but I guess this doesn't make sense because the, the toys are actually working for Vidul, so, so they're leaving the ride to do that. So that is a hole in our logic that we didn't see earlier. So, yeah, this is a projection of some toy. Oh, this was another idea. Well, again, this is not even a no bad idea. This is that, uh, what if one of the characters in the ride has somehow learned, like, basic level of magic? or found a magic staff or magic scrolls. So that's how they're doing the projecting. But basically it's helping give quests based on the character's wants. So the Oracle would be based on the needs of the characters if we're getting that deep. And Wada, why don't you wrap everything up with the big dramatic reveal and then we can um, get to like uh, working on stuff for next week. Okay, so, yeah, I think this is good. So, well, let's go through the assignments for next week is uh, figuring out that thing with the characters, finalizing and locking in. Vidul, what's Vidul doing? What's the specifics that are happening? And, uh, yeah, I mean, that shouldn't take too long. I think we're there and it doesn't have to be perfect, but it has to just kind of be locked for now. And then the rest of us start working on the first room and what's going to happen there and kind of picking some of the ideas, but also thinking about like the overall story, uh, because we're going to be needing to gather where's the sun, where's Vidul, how do we get there, what are the obstacles in our way? 
So there has to be some also impasses or challenges or things we need to gather. Otherwise, why would we not just kind of blast our way through? And I think that's it. I think we're I think we're really into like gameplay uh, now. And I also kind of try, pr promise to like to like get a better idea of how this is going to end. So where we're going, but also to kind of keep that uh, somewhat uh, under the sleeve, you know. But basically, I think what we're saying is, do we need to see the ride characters working for Vidul or not? I don't think so, because maybe that's happening in a subterranean way. But I do think seeing this example of power, so maybe there's, there is a tower or very tall trees that we're guided to, or that uh, maybe there is just a tower that they use uh, to watch the canals, and the the troops are like, okay, today is the day at dawn when the Baron is going to send in the four ships uh, with cannons or whatever, I don't know, or magic users to kind of tell Vadul, hey, just like, uh, let's, like, again, a show force to, to, to establish peace. And maybe Vidul's even made an idea, that, but that's why we're the backup. But then when we see something that is mind-boggling, which I think it does, I, I, I agree for the story, I think this is a necessary component. It has to be some sort of mist dragon. We did try to find those spells. We haven't found something that fits. Like the meteor spell was the closest thing. That's a ninth level spell. So I don't know. Like uh, we still have to kind of get an idea of if that's pot. Like because again, then we'll, later we face Vidul. Would we be? Would what would uh, fifth level characters be able to? Um, so we have to kind of figure that gap in. But basically, there's two or three or four ships. And they're sitting outside of this pumping station, right, uh, in these locks. Uh, and they've come from the south uh, or the north. I guess it doesn't matter. But they're sitting there. And maybe they're even spread out. Uh, and then this mist dragon comes and just wipes them all out. And it's kind of unbelievable. But it's also the Baron kind of knew, suspected something, so again, not, that's it. We have to go. So it creates uh, like a, it is. A, I don't know. I think it is a story event that has to happen because, I mean, does it maybe right? Uh, I mean, I guess it doesn't necessarily need to happen, but it would be cool, and it would also let us know what we're dealing with. And I mean, maybe in that sense. Because it is so powerful, maybe it's more powerful than Vidul's uh, level, or maybe it makes the characters more cautious and realizes they're going to need a team larger than they'll need NPCs, whether they're from the ride or not. So I don't know. I guess we're open to figuring that out uh, too. So I think that's a concrete thing we need to research: is uh, what level is Vidul? Because we didn't talk about that. How powerful is Vidul? And how's this achieved? Uh, I mean, obviously, it's some sort of otherworldly power. I mean, I guess it would be that uh, the, whatever this mist uh, the, that's in, infiltrating and giving Vidul advice finds, Vidul finds some sort of artifact. Uh, but I think it also helps if, like, uh, really dialing in what level is Vidul. But either way, I think it should motivate the party to be creative and not just rush in, even though we're trying to prepare for people that want to play that way. So, okay, I think we're good. Thanks, everybody. I know this is a very character-only thing, um, but it's good to be with all my characters. Hopefully we'll have a meal. No, nobody wants So we're not going to eat together as a team. Okay, well, how about next week we do? While we discuss it or after, okay, afterwards, uh, could we have uh, a snack before we go over things as a team? Uh, everybody will think about it. Okay, well, everybody gets some rest now, and we'll go from there. Good night, everybody. All right, I want to thank everybody that became a patron recently. 
I want to thank Paul, Jason, and Jennifer. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, and good night, Helen, Marianne, and Jeannie. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, and good night, John, M, and Gino. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, and good night, Samuel, Christy, and Deborah. Thank you. Thanks, 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 and good night, Emily, Hester, and Kelly. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, and good night. Jill, Christopher, and Catherine, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. And Betty and Camille, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Um, Sleep With Me exists because people support the show directly on Patreon or Apple Podcasts, and we grow as a show uh, by people kind of spreading the word about the podcast for free. Just let people know about it on social media or forums or whenever it comes up. You don't have to push it, just bring it up, you know, when it comes up. And we've been able to expand our offerings over the past few years uh, from 200 to over 500 plus episodes in the free archives because the sponsors like this one or Scoot's asking for support. Uh, thanks and good night, everybody. Hey, everybody, this is Scoot's just tucking in here with a reminder. We could really use your support, uh, but it's going to really feel good. Uh, to support the show too, not only do you get a bunch of bonus content by supporting the podcast on Patreon, but you also get that relief of say, hey, I, I support the podcast. It puts me to sleep. It feels good. I'm a part of a club, as uh, Chloe said, uh, where, uh, you know, uh, like um, um, people are putting, you know, like uh, people are, uh, everybody gets it, right? That's the only reason people really listen to Sleep on a regular basis is they get it. Uh, I don't need to listen, but it's here for me. I'm not alone. And I love making this show. But the, the, the reality is I'm only able to do this because of people that support the show like you. So you'll feel really good about it. You'll get some sweet bonus content. And we have a free trial ten dollar at the $10 over on Patreon. Go ahead, start it up, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron. Maybe set an alarm and a reminder on your phone right now. Remind me to support the podcast that puts me to sleep uh, night after night after night that I love so much. Please remind me tomorrow morning I love sleep with me at 9 a.m. and I want to support it. Please remind me tomorrow I love what sleep with me does for me on a regular basis and I want to support it. And you do that sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron. Good night, everybody.